What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the witch class, which is our designated kind of minion class for Path of Exile 2. Um, we're just going to take a little bit more information and take a closer look at the class. Now, off the bat, I'm not the biggest, like minion player when it comes to arpgs uh, i really just like to move fast kill stuff and and this looks pretty insane but the witch just in particular isn't one of my more favorite classes to play however uh there is a really cool blood witch transformation that looks pretty insane but as you can see like the minions actually look pretty strong so let's take a deeper dive into uh the witch so let's go ahead and back this up big shout out to jonathan majors here Powerful chaos spells that the so let's back it up. We're finishing up. That's the uh, the mercenary. Twenty two acts of undead monsters to fight for her. Oh yeah. Powerful chaos spells that the here we go. Brings. Here we go. Occult skills are some of the most varied in the game, with skeletons, noxious spells, specialty minions, curses, and sacrificial magic. They did talk about potentially adding adding golems to the game for the witch. Before we talk about minions, we'll have to talk about a new resource in Path of Exile 2 called Spirit. Okay. This is a spirit gem, which allows you to pick from a range of persistent skills. All classes have a variety of these skills, which can add some very interesting effects. Ooh, like okay. Like armor, which does cold damage to enemies that hit you, or raging spirits, which summon fiery skulls. Oh, check those things out. That's cool. For the witch, though, we'll want to be using our spirit to create permanent minions. These minions will be revived automatically when they die. So oh, okay. That's super cool because in other ARPGs um, like Diablo 4, at least early on, they wanted you to feel the experience of summoning monsters as they died. And it was very conflicting because the minions were not very strong. So they would die pretty quick. So between trying to use your skills, so you had to build your your spirit, and then you had a, a spirit spender, and then in between that, your mass clicking to raise your army of the dead, it made playing Necromancer impossible. It literally made it impossible to play. It was just like, I'm spending all my time just raising my monsters because they just keep dying. So the fact that they you auto raise them is pretty insane. Maybe it's an aura or something that does it, but that's so good. Here I'm using the skill screen to allocate which minions I would like in my horde. Ooh. Arsonists or warriors. Or warriors are cheap but weak. Useful for tanking damage and distracting enemies. Okay. But I want more heavy hitters in my army. So I'm going to unsummon some warriors and instead add skeletal arsonists. Ooh, nice. Come with special active abilities called you even get like these little like scorpion type guys. Like these things look cool. Order these guys to detonate your own minions for even more damage and air of effect. If you want a bigger army, you'll need a scepter. This new weapon type is imbued with even more spirit, allowing you That's to summon so good. more friends. And if you want an even bigger army than that, you can take advantage of corpses to summon true hordes of minions. So see, so your normal corpses that are part of your skills get auto summoned. But if you want to summon monsters that you've already killed, then you have to manually summon them. That's how it should be. If I'm a necromancer, I shouldn't have to constantly click to summon my own guys on top of additional guys. Like that just doesn't make sense. But what can a witch do while her army is at work? Well, she has a range of chaos spells to spread disease amongst your enemies. Ooh, okay. Skills to impale them. Or Ooh, that looks sweet. Them to make them weaker so your horde can take them down. Okay. There are 25 active occult skills. By the end game, God, they look a good. Some army of the dead consuming everything in its path. Oh, look how they they just detonate. That's so cool. The sorceress bends the elements. Okay. So one more thing, I got to go to the Twitter because this is just nutty. Look at how strong these minions are and how fast they're attacking with this scepter. They get increased attack speed, resistance, and more max life. And they do critical weakness. Like, it just, they look so strong. Like, this actually looks like an, an actual necromancy-type minion build. Where, and look, they're not, like, 
Like they're just like killing everything. Ranged like minions, like the skeleton ones stay on top of you. Now I do always like the like uh, command, like hey attack here. I do always like that though. That's always really nice, because if you run up to an to a pack and maybe there's like an oddball elite or yellow uh, monster, you kind of want to kill them, right? But God, it, it looks so good. That was just a clip from Path of Exile that they tweeted out, but um, it's really good. So Jonathan Majors, like the wit the witch, just seems really good. Primary summoner, but she also has a range of other supporting skills. But the thing we want to show you first is just the fact that um, she uh, often, and in fact, all the classes use a resource called Spirit. So there's a new. So they did change it. So everybody is using Spirit yeah, instead of mana, I guess. Spirit gem, which you can use here, and that'll um, give you a bunch of these. Uh, yep, we learned about that. And, um, there you go. Now, these are permanent minions, which means that if they die, um, they're going to respawn again automatically. You don't have to spawn them constantly. Um, so good. That means that it's, uh, during boss fights and things like that, it makes it a... Um, a yeah, because imagine imagine towards a boss fight where like, oh, I have no corpses to raise my minions. How do I fight this boss if my minions are all dead? Especially if the boss doesn't have minions to kill and then resummon your own stuff from. It makes it pretty much impossible. So this being in here is key. Uh, a, a lot easier. You don't have to worry about having to have corpses every time, that kind of thing. But we also do want to support large minion armies. And because of that, we also yes. have uh, minion skills that you can summon from corpses as well. So Look how many there is. Um, those are summoned from corpses. Uh, while you're clearing, you'll get large armies. Um, during boss fights, it'll be That's a That's super cool, so man. The, uh, minions, uh, the, your permanent minions for the most part. Now, he's also got some other supporting skills, uh, a lot of uh, things focusing on chaos damage. So um, he's got a skill called Contagion that'll spread between monsters and um, other things like... So effectively, like, curses and stuff? A, a few other chaos damaging skills. Now, the other thing with minions is that all the permanent minions come with extra abilities uh, that you can trigger manually. So you see those okay. markers on your minions. Um, you can use those to explode your minions. So that's the arsonists. Uh, it's their ability. They'll throw a little bomb and explode your minion. Um, oh, that's so them, cool. Also other ones. For example, the uh, snipers have the ability to create little gas clouds. And uh, the more minions oh, you have, my the more gosh. you can use those abilities. So effectively, it means that Ooh. each also effectively serves as an extra skill as well as being a, uh, a meat shield fuse. Oh, well. my God. I love that. I think that's so good. So you can just have like an infinite an army of minions. Um, but now we're going to show off the mercenary. An infinite army of minions. So over here, big shout out to Goblin Inc. He got to go play in L.A. Um, so big shout out to him in going a little bit more deep dive into the uh, witch. So starting out, guys, you're going to have two ascendancies. You got the Infernalist. Okay. And then you got the Blood Mage. Now, there isn't a necromancy type the infernalist definitely seems more of that but I'm just going to talk about the infernalist this fire yeah it seems really cool that can shape shift your character into a so this is where you can shape shift into that blood mage i was talking about this seems super strong now i will say jonathan majors did say on a interview podcast that like you will still have minions even though you're in this mode so you can have minions while you're shapeshifted into this witch or this blood witch, which I think is very unique because then it allows this, you know, the transformation to be even stronger, right? Demon, which gives you crazy mobility and yeah. Lots of extra damage. Look at how or cool that is. On something like the Hellhound summon, which is more minion focused, and the Hellhound is going to do AOE fire damage. It's going to absorb incoming damage that you take from hits. The Hellhound seems this. very, very like, cool. You kind of get the theme of this, right? But what's interesting is when I spoke to developers, they did say that this is going to be the main minion specialization. Okay, so there you go. So this in this ascendancy will be your main. Like, if you want to be a, a minion based witch, then this is the ascendancy for you. For the witch. Very now, cool. We'll see, you know how that ends up playing out, but that is what they told me. The other specialization is a blood and bone specialization. This is very it interesting. It makes all of your skills cost life as well as mana, but it gives you access to a lot of different healing. So it seems like whenever you kill enemies, they actually like drop blood orbs that you can pick up to heal your So you got blood orbs to pick up and heal. So it changes your skills from mana to life that cost. However, in another interview with Jonathan Rogers, he did say that while you're using this ascendancy and stuff, it's even in the shape of a heart. That's awesome that like your life does double 
So that way you can effectively, your life pool will double to effectively be able to use these skills. So that was something that wasn't mentioned in the big like reveal, but um, that is a thing. So that is how it's going to counterbalance and you're going to be able to actually use this ascendancy. And the skill tree also has access to lifesteal and access to different yeah. damage multipliers. Now, one thing that's interesting is this does give you extra damage based on maximum life, which is kind of It's cool. so cool. So basically you just stack a bunch of life and just do damage. It's super, super good. Um, so then there's a bunch of different minion skills that are in here, which I think are very unique. Oh my gosh. These ads are just ridiculous, dude. How are we supposed to get through any of this? Okay. So you got a bunch of very unique skills. You want to get exactly how many guys you want of each. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nuts how many minions you, you can actually summon. And you have so many different ones here. While you're fighting, you got the archers, you got the warriors, you got the Ar the arcanists, then you got the skeletal snipers. I guess snipers, sorry, not archers, which are really really cool. They fire a gas arrow and do poisonous, and then if it's if it's hit by a detonator skill, it ignites the enemy it touches. So you basically can combo that into uh, your arsonist and explode them there. It seems so strong, so so strong. There's some very very good skills here for uh minions now chaos skills are a little bit different you got die here back from Pee one with some changes so, so you got contagion here which is super good so you can go with like more of a chaos build so if you're doing like that life stuff you could really do that right and then you have where is it every time you cast a spell you drain 100 percent of your life from a minion the spell gains 40 percent damage so you're effectively killing all of your minions as you cast spells which are really good then you got bone skills that are incredibly powerful. I really like this idea of using different bone skills to really deal a bunch of damage. I always like that from other games, like just being a bone necromancer and just relying on my necromancy skills as opposed to the minions. But bone cage seems pretty insane. You like spike everything up. Oh, that's so cool. And just deal some damage. It seems interesting. It can slow them down, which is kind of unique. Uh, then you also have Bone Storm, which is kind of a classic that's been in other games before. Where you throw these down. The charge up for that skill seems really long. Holy. I mean, maybe it's the more you charge up, the more um, splinters you actually get. But it does seem that way. Now, in the passive tree, there's a lot of really cool things here that you guys can do. Um, power of the dead so you can basically go full minions or you can go into some more corruption living death lust for sacrifice 40 percent increase minion damage while you have at least two different offerings um necromancy talisman all bonuses from a crypt amulet apply to your minions instead of you that's kind of cool if you really want to be a full necro um right hand of darkness minions have a uh, bigger aoe inflict withered on hit which is strong they have 20% physical damage resistance and chaos res, which just means they last longer. But yeah, the it's really, really cool. And the fact that they added the scepter in here um, makes it to where like you can really go all in. The scepter is a new, I guess, new weapon mechanic, or not mechanic, but new weapon type in here in the scepter. So you can you can use the scepter like that was displayed from Jonathan Rogers in that other video that like it makes it really strong. There's a, these are stats you can't find anywhere else. And so you can only get the bonuses for this stuff on scepters. For my testing, these stats do not apply to you. They only apply to allies. Oh, and that's nice. They don't have an attack damage roll or a spell damage roll. So if you're wanting to play, so it's just like a, a scepter that applies strictly to your minions. Spell casting, which you're going to be going with like double wand, but if you're wanting to play right. a like minion, you have to go scepter. So scepters for minions and wands for anything else. But yeah, guys, this is the uh, the witch, man. The witch seems super cool. It's not necessarily the class that I like. I'm probably going to be playing sorceress or something else like that. But the witch is very, very cool looking. I think for a lot of minion players or true um, necromancer players, types, those kind, they will finally actually have something to play, which is really cool. So, yeah, guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the witch and a little bit more of a deep dive. Um, shout out to Goblin Inc. again for providing all this information. Big shout out to him and the channel. 
Uh, make sure you guys comment, help out, help me in the algorithm to push out and grow our channel. Make sure to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.